<clears throat> All right, ladies, let's see if we can pick back up where we left off. Okay, mm -hmm. last week we kind of backtracked a little bit to talk about the sons of Korah. Yeah, and that was good. That was, in, that was interesting. I found that very interesting. Um, so we kind of backtracked a little bit, so kind of go back to where we were before that. You had the whole thing with Korah and Dathan and Abiram. You know, they got sucked into the earth. And then the, uh, the other people that were with them, the, the 200 of them, they got fire rained down upon them. And then the people got, is, got mad with Moses and Aaron and said, you killed God's people. And it was a whole big mess. And then there was the plague. God sent the plague because the people were still complaining. They were still complaining. So God sent the plague and a whole mess of them. I think it was like 14,000 of them were killed. And remember we talked about Aaron standing in the gap. He stood between the plague and the people and kept it at bay. That was where we kind of left off last time. Before I get into this week's lesson, I read something this week when I was getting ready to study, or I was studying for this, but it was kind of building up to this. Something I read and it kind of, it was an interesting point for me. It kind of gave me a different perspective on the children of Israel. Because sometimes I just think these people are just the dumbest, most stubborn people ever. <laughs> then I know that I'm just like them. <laughs> but actually what I read actually made a lot of sense to, some, to, to a degree. Now, what just happened with Cor and them, I, I still don't get. How they didn't understand that that was God that did that. And how God rained down fire, you know. But here's what this guy said anyway. And I, I think it's very interesting. Up until this point... The Lord hasn't actually spoken to the children of Israel directly. Right. He has spoken to Moses and said, tell the people this. So all this time, they've had to take Moses' word for it that he was telling them what God said and not making up his own stuff or adding to or taking away. And then if you think about that from that viewpoint, okay, think about Moses coming up and saying, okay, children of Israel, God says I'm in charge. Mm. And God says, my brother Aaron is in charge with me. Oh, and our tribe, the tribe of Levi, they're the special tribe that gets set apart and gets to be, you know, the Lord is their portion and whatever. And they get to serve in the tabernacle and they get the honor above all else. That's what God said. Oh. Mm -hmm. How yeah. would that sound to us? That's true. You know? And I, nice. didn't I ne Yeah, I never thought about that. But, I mean, really, I mean, if you come up and say, okay, God said I'm in charge, and my brother is also in charge, and, and my tribe is, and, yeah, yeah, my tribe, you know. Than you. <laughs> it does sound kind of contrived and made up. So every time Moses comes and says, you know, God says this and God says that, then the people are going, did he now? Mm -hmm. And I can, I can kind of see now where that, I was like, Okay, all this time I've just really been giving these people a hard time. But, You've been on Moses' side. But, yeah, but now, I mean, when you think about it from that perspective, that is kind of a, I mean, because if we had somebody come up and say, you know, God told me this and that I'm in charge, and God said, you're supposed to listen to me, and you're supposed to follow me, and you're supposed to obey me. Well, isn't that already being done by some of the preachers that... Well, it is. <laughs> yep. But, I mean, really, I mean, so I kind of get it now. But then... Up to this point, then Moses said, like, it's like he sensed that about the people, that they were, and that was why he said that with the, the Korah and Dathan and Abiram. He said, if it be that they just die a natural death, right. then you'll know that, it, you know, but if they die some extraordinary death, then, then you'll know it was God. It was almost like he was saying, okay, I know what you're thinking, mm -hmm. so let's, let's make it very clear. Well, that was an extraordinary death. I'm mm -hmm. sorry. <laughs> that was very extraordinary. But they still didn't get it. They yeah. still came back and said, you killed. The fire rained down from heaven. How would Moses do that? Right. How would Moses do that? How would Aaron and, do that? And to those selected. Seats. Yeah, and just, the, well, and that's even the houses. You know, the, the Korah and his family right. and whatever. How did just those three households get sucked down and not everybody else? And how did just these people get burned up and nobody else? It had to be God, you mm -hmm. know. But they still, they were like, no, no, no. You, you, you killed God's people. So then the plague came. And again, okay, here we have a plague. Did Moses cause the plague? Did Aaron cause the plague? Could they cause a plague? No, in fact, they witnessed Aaron standing there in the midst risking his life to save them from the plague. But God says, okay, I know these people. 
that's still not going to be proof enough. Uh -oh, yeah. <laughs> yes. So we're going to settle this once <laughs> and for all. Once and for all. They're not going to doubt me anymore about this, about who's in charge and what their place is. So that's where number 17 picks up. Number 17. There is 13 verses, and we're going to read through all the verses because it's kind of one complete story. And then we'll talk about it some. So if you want to look with me in Numbers chapter 17. And we will start in verse 1. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, again, he's talking to Moses, Speak unto the children of Israel. Okay, I'm going to tell you, Moses, you tell Israel. Take of every one of them a rod according to the house of their fathers, of all their princes according to the house of their fathers, twelve rods. There were twelve tribes. Write thou every man's name upon his rod. And thou shalt write Aaron's name upon the rod of Levi. For one rod shall be for the head of the house of their fathers. We'll, we'll go back and discuss all this in a minute. And thou shalt lay them, upon, lay them up in the tabernacle of the congregation before the testimony where I will meet with you. And it shall come to pass that the man's rod whom I shall choose shall blossom. And I will make to cease from me the murmurings of the children of Israel whereby they murmur against you. And Moses spake unto the children of Israel, and every one of their princes gave him a rod apiece. For each prince one, according to their father's house, even twelve rods. And the rod of Aaron was among the rods. And Moses laid up the rods before the Lord in the tabernacle of witness. And it came to pass that on the morrow Moses went into the tabernacle of witness. And behold, the rod of Aaron for the house of Levi was budded, and brought forth buds, and bloomed blossoms, and yielded almonds. And Moses brought out all the rods from before the Lord unto all the children of Israel, and they looked and took every man his rod. And the Lord said unto Moses, Bring Aaron's rod again before the testimony, to be kept for a token against the rebels. And thou shalt quite take away their murmurings from me, that they die not. I like the way God worded that. And Moses did so, as the Lord commanded him, so did he. And the children of Israel spake unto Moses, saying, Behold, we die, we perish, we all perish. Whosoever cometh anything near unto the tabernacle of the Lord shall die. Shall we be consumed with dying? Those last two verses we probably won't get to this week. We'll probably cover those next week. <coughs> but I want to talk about the rods. Okay, in Psalm 23, we talk about the rod and staff. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. The shepherds had a rod and a staff. They were not the same thing. The staff was a long, skinny stick with a crook, okay, like a candy cane, mm -hmm. very big candy cane. <laughs> and that was used for, you know, ring, ringing them in, bringing them in, you know, holding them still. It had a purpose of that. And the, we, we've talked about the, the staff and the rod in, when we went through Psalm 23 twice. So I'm not going to get into it, but that was, the rod was kind of more used a lot for protection. It was kind of more like a short, uh, thicker, and it was like a... a basically like a club. You'd use it to defend against other animals. You know, beat the, beat the lion, beat the bear, whatever was coming to take your flock. Okay. Once you kind of get out of that shepherd mentality, the word rod, staff, scepter, those are kind of all used interchangeably. And they basically mean like a, almost like a walking stick. Okay. Basically. Something to the akin of that, only longer. I didn't want to bring really, really, really long ones. Jason's like, you got big sticks. I was like, well, he was cutting up like little sticks. I was like, no, I don't need kindling. I need sticks. <laughs> but that's what we do with these. We use these. These fall off our oak tree all the time. And what we do is we put them aside. This one's got a worm on it. Cool. Uh, I just saw I was like, something's moving. It's got a little worm. But we put these aside. Once they fall, we, just, we have a little pile, and we let them dry. And then you just snap them apart, and we take them inside and use them for kindling. Makes good kindling, okay? Don't waste them. They're good wood. But they had a staff, and they were all different, you know, or a rod, whatever you want to call it, staff rod. Some of them were taller because they were made usually to fit your, your person, you know. So if you were a taller person, you had a taller rod. If you were, so you could hold it at the appropriate place, you know. And some of them were thicker than others, you know. Some of them were, were really thick. Some of them, it just depended on your taste. Kind of like 
shoes or clothes for us. You know, it was an accessory that yeah. they carried around. And it, it, they were all different. They were Some were from different trees. You know, this one was from an almond tree. This one was from, you know, whatever tree. It just, it didn't matter. They were, it was what you wanted. And everybody had one. You just, you used it for walking, you used it for protection, you used it for whatever you wanted to. But they were all different, okay? And that's why I brought all these different sticks. There's skinny ones, there's longer ones, there's, you know, fatter ones, you know, whatever. And they were all obviously probably a lot smoother than this and whatever. <laughs> but Moses said, okay, every tribe, there's 12 tribes, and each of them had like a, a head of their tribe. So he said, that head, engrave, however they did that, if they had knives that they made or stones or however, put your name on your rod. So, okay, here's my name, you know. And they put it in this pile in front of the tabernacle, like Moses said. And God said, now when it's time for Levi's, the tribe of Levi, he said, I want you to specifically put Aaron's name on there, not just Levi, as in the tribe of Levi. I want you to specifically put Aaron's name. Because he's trying to resolve this, and if he had just put Levi, right. if you remember, Korah was of the tribe of Levi. Right. So it would it could still be, you know, well the other people in the tribe of Levi saying, well, well how do we know it's Aaron and not somebody else in the tribe of Levi? So God said, okay, for Levi, I want you to specifically put Aaron's name. <coughs> so all of them turned in their rod with their name on it, and Moses put them at the tabernacle, and that's where they stayed until God, he said, you know, by the, by the morning, you'll have your answer. So in the morning, Moses went in, and he gathered up the rods and went out to, to show the people what he'd found. Now remember, their names are on the rods, so it's not like, you know, you're going to get mixed up. Your name's on there. If you notice, and I told you, we, we, these fall out of our oak tree, and we put them aside. Once they fall out of the oak tree and we put them aside, guess what? They look like this. They get drier, but they stay looking like this. Mm -hmm. They don't grow any more leaves. Right. They don't grow any more acorns. No they, don't grow it. they don't grow anything else. <clears throat> Nothing. They just stay dead and lifeless because they're not connected to the tree anymore. The tree is where they get all their nutrients, which we can take our lesson there from John 15 about the vine and the branches. Mm -hmm. And I could get into a whole lesson there about abiding in the vine, and once you're detached from the vine, you just wither up and die. But I don't have time to get into that today. <laughs> so, but th this is... You know, those Ooh. men, and they may have they may have had nice rods all polished up, and, you know, they may have spent a lot of time making them all pretty and whatever, but they were just dead wood. They, they may not have been as ugly and rough looking as this, but they were still just dead wood. Okay? And that's all they would ever be, dead wood. But Moses went in, and God said, okay, whoever I pick, their dead wood is going to blossom. Is that possible? Only with God. Only with God. <laughs> <laughs> Only with God. So he goes in and he gathers up and he starts, hand, he comes out. And I don't know how he did it. I don't know if Moses yeah. did it with flourish. You know, <laughs> if he had him hidden behind his back. You know, I don't know. I, I kind of like to think he kind of did it in this dramatic way and kind of yeah. saved Aaron for last. And that's why I brought these sticks in this morning because this is the mental picture I had. Could have brought one out of the yeah, yeah. It looks like it's not you. Yeah, that's what, that's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking that whole congregation was there. Moses caught them all forward, right there in front of the tabernacle. And he's like, okay, we're going to see what happens. So I'm going to go in and get your sticks. And I'll come out. I'll call you forward, you know. So he'd call forward, you know, okay, the tribe of Reuben. Reuben. Okay. And the prince of Reuben comes forward, you know. You know. <laughs> And he says, hold right there. And he comes in. Okay, Reuben, here's your stick. Deny. <laughs> Doesn't look like it's you. Yeah. <laughs> Blooming, blossoming. Not so much. No. Yeah. Dead <clears throat> stick. And he says, okay, you know, Simeon, the tribe of Simeon. Simeon steps up. Well, it wasn't Reuben, so it's probably me. You know, and he yeah. steps up and, okay, Simeon, here's your stick. <laughs> you know, and it's like, oh, man, that one's got a spider on it. I got all kinds of bugs this morning. <laughs> Bugs. <laughs> Can you imagine that? They'd have a mine's got a spider on it. Yeah. Does that count as blooming? <laughs> it's life. It's life. It's life. Mine's got a worm. But stick after stick, tribe after tribe, he called them for. And 
all this time, he, he'd already seen them all. So he knew. He's saving Aaron for last. You know, this tribe and this tribe and this tribe. Here's your stick. Here's your stick. Here's your stick. Dead stick after dead stick after dead stick. So you get down to the tribe of Levi. Aaron, come forward. Well, by then they had to know, but I think some of them were still going, he's just going to get dead stick too. Mm-hmm. Well, it and, just, and they could be thinking... Uh, after they're all handed out, maybe that's when they're going to bloom. Well, that's true. I didn't you know. think about that. Yeah, yeah, maybe once everybody has theirs, then it's just going <clears> to, <throat> you know. Yeah. Out hope for so, so they're looking at, please bloom, please bloom, please yeah. bloom. <laughs> that's true. I didn't think about that. <laughs> but there's, there, So they're just standing here watching, and okay? And his Aaron come forward, and Aaron comes forward. And again, this is just the way I see it in my mind. You can take it or leave it. You know, Aaron comes forward, and... He's not cocky because he already knows he's doing what God called him to do. And if his, if his is bloom, then that's fine. If not, then God's done with him for that position. You know, he's good. And Moses kind of smirks. <laughs> Be right back. And he goes into the tabernacle. And he comes out and he goes, here's your stick. <laughs> yeah. Only it was so much better than this. Oh, this yes. just has flowers. Yes. Mm-hmm. Wow. According to the verse, let me go back up and read that verse. It budded, so it had buds, and it bloomed blossoms, so it had flowers, and it yielded almonds, so it had fruit. Fruit. It was all the life cycles of the tree in one branch. Wow. That's not even possible. No. Mm -mm. It doesn't all bloom at one time. You don't have buds and flowers and, you may have buds and flowers, but you wouldn't have almonds. Right. You You, you would have, yeah, you would have, maybe have flowers and almonds, but you wouldn't still have buds. It grows out of those. You could possibly have two at a time, but you can't have all three. Yeah. Because, it, you know what, I said I was going to make it blossom, but let's just go a little. <laughs> and I thought of the verse, you know. Because I'm God, I can make it do that. Yeah, I thought of the verse, you know, exceedingly, abundantly, <laughs> above all we ask or think. Oh, wow. You know, God said, I said blossom. Just in case that's not enough, <laughs> let's go one step further. Let's have the buds and the blossoms and the fruit all on one staff. Well, Can you imagine? We, tend to be, and we need a lot like lots them. of proof. Yeah, we <laughs> are. <laughs> we need the, and, God, and that's what God's like proof to on all proof yeah. on proof. Well, He said, He said, we're going to stop this murmuring now. This is going to end it. And He knew it was going to, but He wanted to make sure He did a thorough job. <laughs> So he, like I said, this one just has these pretty little flowers, but his had the whole work. And it was, I guess, all the way up and down. It had all these nice wow. almonds and buds and blooms. And I'm thinking Aaron's going, well, what do I do with it now? I can't use it as a staff anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I can't use it as a staff. But can you imagine what all the other, I think I'd be hiding my stick somewhere. Uh, <laughs> and put that back there, you know. Because it was obviously not anybody else. And, oh, by the way, I think even with all that blooming, I think you could still read the name Aaron oh, of course. very oh, yeah. clearly. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Anybody want to see where it says Aaron? Because <laughs> now, here's what I want you to do. Now that everybody has seen this, this ought to end this fighting and this murmuring of, well, I'm in charge. Well, why are you in charge? Well, it's not fair that you're in charge. This ought to end it. He said, I want you to put this in the tabernacle. Remember where uh, they gathered up the pot of manna before mm-hmm. and they put it in the ark? Mm-hmm. He said, I want you to do the same thing with Aaron's rod. And that way, just kind of like he did with the censers, where he put the censers around the ark, anytime anybody has a question... Anytime anybody doubts, it's the paddle on the wall. It's the paddle it's on the wall. <laughs> Very <Pretty> good. good. <laughs> My mom got on me for that, by the way. She's like, they're going to call DSS on me. <laughs> I said, I turned out all right. I'm fine. Any, in case anybody ever had any question, they could go look. And guess what they'd find? They'd find a rod that was still budded, wow. still blossomed, and still yielding fruit. Wow. Just like the manna. Remember the manna? When they would gather up more than a day's worth, what would happen? Rot. It would spoil. Yeah, it would rot. It would grow maggots and bugs. But now that manna that's in the ark has been in there for years. 
and it's still fine. It's still edible. It's still good. Good as the first day it fell. That's what was going to happen with Aaron's rod. It was going to stay in that pristine condition of all the life cycles forever. <clears throat> cool. No wonder cool. they still try to find the ark. <laughs> well, what's interesting is if you read through and you study because Jerusalem was captured many times and the temple was raided and the ark was stolen, at one point all that was left was the manna. Oh. You read one passage and it says they opened up the ark and all that was in there was the pot of manna. Oh, okay. So where are the other stuff? Or no, wait a minute. I said that. Was it the Ten Commandments that were still in there? Oh, it's the Ten Commandments. Ten Commandments. For sure. I think it was the Ten Commandments yeah. that were still in there. The pot of manna was gone, and the rod was gone. Oh, well, you know. So we don't know at what point. Flash that that rod. Yeah, I don't know at what <laughs> point they they disappeared, and I don't know what happened to them. But I I because there's one passage where you read, and there's only two things in there, and there's another passage where there's only one, and it's been pat the ark has been captured yeah, and yeah so it's like but i'd still like to know what's in there now you know mm, so yeah my why things i want to see when i get to heaven the ark what the ark and what's in it and what's in yeah. it well of course you know god's going to have to restore everything back to it anyway so i'm mm -hmm. assuming everything will still be in there so mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's like here's proof here's proof but there's a couple of things that i got to hurry up because i'm out of time already <laughs> time goes so fast in sunday school yes yeah. <laughs> it does for me anyway a um, couple of things I want to just say about Aaron's rod. First off, the whole point of this rod, this blossoming rod, was to stop the murmuring. Well, the only way it could do that was for Aaron to turn it over and give it to God so it could stay there as that proof. If he kept it, I don't know what would have happened to it. For one thing, I don't know if it would have continued to flourish and bloom. Or, right. But God said, I want you to give it back to me. And I thought that was a beautiful picture of our lives. Mm -hmm. You know, the only way we can do what we're supposed to do and accomplish what we're supposed to accomplish is if we give ourselves over to God and we give our lives to him. We give him everything we have and say, it's without you, I'm just a dried branch. Oh, that's good. But with you, when I just give, it makes no sense to us. It's hard to, it's like, how can I live if I give it away, uh -huh. mm -hmm. you know? But that's how it works with God. The more we give, the more life we have. How does it all work out if I give it under my control? Yeah. yeah. We don't get it. It doesn't make sense because we have little human brains and they can't even begin. Well, I mean, think about it. They say that we only use like 10% of our brain at any given moment. Well, if we're only using 10% of the whole brain and our brain is nothing compared to God's brain, Good grief, how much do we not know and understand? We don't even know and understand how much our full we brain really is supposed do. to know. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. But I thought that was just a beautiful picture of give it to God and it and will grow to flourish. and continue to flourish oh, wow. and continue to live That's and be what it was supposed to be. You know, be do what it was supposed to do. But if Aaron isn't, no, it's mine. I want to keep it, you know. And he could have, but he didn't. Because he'd, we see Aaron mature, even though he was already 90-something years old. We see him mature through here. And we see him say, I'm going to give it to God. Let him have it. I'll get me another stick. You know? mm -hmm. <laughs> I'll go get another dead stick, but that one is special. And I'm not going to just use it for a walking stick. Well, we're special. I know sometimes we don't feel like it, but God says we are. God says we're chosen people, a royal priesthood. That means we're special. But God says, only if you'll give it over to me and be what I ask you to be. Be what I intended for you to be. And then the other thing I wanted to, is this is a beautiful picture of Christ. Okay, it's a beautiful picture of Christ. In Isaiah 11, verse 1, it says, And there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse, and a branch <laughs> shall grow out of his roots. This is a prophecy of Jesus. Jesse, David, okay, Jesse was David's father, and David was in the line of Christ. And out of that, this stem or branch or rod or scepter, however you want to, whatever those terms, they're all interchangeable at this point, said so he's going to grow. And this is what I thought about. Okay, remember these sticks? 
These are other gods. Oh, that's mm. good. They're dead. And once they died, they stopped doing anything else. They couldn't grow anymore. They couldn't flourish anymore. <laughs> they couldn't help anymore. They couldn't hear anymore. They couldn't see anymore. That's they couldn't good. do anything else for their people. But this is our branch, our God. Because he was, at one point, dead. Three days. He was dead. Lifeless. Detached. But he didn't stay that way. Amen. Like Aaron's rod, he bloomed and he blossomed <coughs> forth. And he had the fruit because it was, and it was a proof too. Remember the, the Pharisees and whatever kept coming and he said, in three days, I'll tear down this temple and build it up again. And they're like, oh, he's talking about the temple. And you can't, you know. I wonder what he's talking about. He's talking about, I'm going to die. But in three days, I'm coming back again. And it was proof. And you can see over and over through the story where people is like, I don't believe, I don't believe, I don't believe. And then the resurrection happened and they're like, I believe. Mm -hmm. I believe. It was their proof, just like this was proof for Aaron and the children of Israel and everything. It's like, this served as proof that, you know what? There's something different about this branch <laughs> and this branch. And I still cannot understand, you know, well, I serve, you know, Buddha or I serve this or I serve Muhammad or whatever. And I'm like, they're dead. How can you serve them? They were what can you do for them? And better yet, what can they do for you? I don't understand that. Why would you serve something? I mean, I don't get it. But I get this. And I think it's a beautiful picture. Whether or not it's intended to be a picture of that, I'm, I have no idea. But that's what I thought of. That's what I thought of. And I thought, what a beautiful picture because it's, you see Jesus in Aaron's rod, but we see us too. And aren't we supposed to be like Jesus? Well, what did Jesus do? He said, not my will, but thine be done. And he said, I give up my spirit. He gave up. He didn't, not gave up in the sense of he quit, but he gave up his spirit. He surrendered Surrender. himself. They didn't take his life. Mm -hmm. He gave it. God's not going to take from us and make us, okay, you're going to do this and you're going to do this. And he, God's not like that. He, didn't, he could have made us robots if he wanted to do that. And just programmed us, you know, you do this, you do that. He said, I want to give you a choice to say, all to Jesus, I surrender. Amen. <clears throat> we have the choice. We have the choice. I think so many Christians today are living dead, barren lives. Because, like you said, we don't want to give up control. It's like, well, well, but if I give it away, then I can't control it. And if I give it away, then I can't take care of it and nurture it. And if I give it away, then I won't have it. But that's completely the opposite of what God says. He said, if you give it away, you can have more. And if you give it away, you can have better. And if you give it away, I'll nourish it and I'll take care of it. Which one is better? Which one is better? It all comes down to trust. Trusting that God will do what he says he will do. And knowing that we can trust him to be in control. That's what it's all about. So, the kids asked me this morning, I said, why, why do you have sticks? <laughs> and Jason, and, and, well, that was, can we play with the sticks? No, you can't play with sticks. And Jason asked me, he said, why do you need sticks? And I said, well, it's for a visual aid. And he said, you're not teaching kindergartners anymore. And I said, <laughs> I know that. I said, but I am a very visual person. And when I see something, it, it sticks. It, yeah, it yeah, sticks yeah. in my brain a whole lot more than somebody saying, oh, and it had flowers and it had buds yeah. and it. A picture. When I read that a, verse, picture. I a picture. You yeah, right you're going to see this right here. And that's, I mean, maybe in everybody, everybody's brain doesn't work that way, but that was one thing I did learn in teaching kindergarten. You had to do some things this way, and you had to do some things that way because everybody learns differently. So I was like, you know what? I want my ladies to remember these dead sticks mm -hmm. <laughs> and this blooming stick. <laughs> I said, and sometimes having those things visual helps. So I hope it did help. It's been a like the eye opening thing for me, just the things that we could get that it wasn't just for Aaron and them. You know, it was so much more than just a stick. It so much applies to us today. So
anyway, it's time to stop. Actually, it's past time to stop. <laughs> Big surprise. Let's pray and we'll be dismissed. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you so much for this day, Lord. We thank you for this beautiful picture this morning of how you can take things that are dead and barren and lifeless and you can give them new life, Lord. New life in you. We thank you for the new life that you have given us from salvation. But now, Lord, we pray that we will find that new life of surrender as well. I pray, God, that you'll be with our services, Lord, and all that we do today, Lord, that we will surrender to you, that we will be honoring to you and glorifying to you, and that we will remember, Lord, that it's all about you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.